Last time we made a Minecraft bot and looked at the basics of methods and event listeners. It's important to have a good understanding of the fundamentals, so this time we'll be looking at how to make your bot dig and place blocks, as well as how to respond to messages in chat. Let's start by making a bot the same way we did last time. By the way, if you want to test your bot on a LAN world, you can set your host as localhost and port to the port number that Minecraft gives you in the chat. We'll be adding three commands to this bot. A command to build up one block, a command to mine down one block, and a command to mine a nearby block of gold. The first thing we're going to need is a way to tell the bot what to do. We'll be using the in-game chat for this. At the moment, when I send the bot a message, it doesn't do anything. We can use the chat event, which is called every time there's a message in chat. It gives us the message and the username of the player that sent it. We can make the bot respond to a message by using the chat method. But make sure the bot doesn't try to respond to its own messages. Otherwise, it can get stuck in a loop, spamming the chat with replies to itself. Let's add a bit of logic to our bot to make it execute our functions. Here we're just checking if the message is one of our commands, and if so, execute the corresponding function. Otherwise, we respond with a little message. Let's write a function to make the bot mine the block it's standing on. To make the bot mine a block, you can use the dig method. You just have to pass the block you want it to mine. So first we need to get the position of the block we want to mine, in this case that's one block below the bot. Then we can use the block at method to get the actual block at that position. The object that's returned here has a bunch of useful information about the block, like the type of block it is, how tough it is, and a bunch of other stuff but we don't need any of that information right now. We just need to pass it to the dig method and now our bot can mine block. I want to point out something weird about this code. Let's say you want the bot to send you a message after it mines the block, just to let you know that it's finished or something. So you use the chat method here. And surprisingly, this doesn't work the way you'd expect. The bot will send you a message just after it starts mining instead of after it finishes. This is because the dig method is what's called an asynchronous function. I'm simplifying a bit, but asynchronous functions have two special properties. They don't make you wait for them, and they return a promise. We've just seen an example of the first. Usually our code executes in order, going from one line to the next. Asynchronous functions get initialized, but they don't hold up the rest of our code while they execute which means the bot sends the message before it's mined the block. A lot of methods in Mineflow are asynchronous. It's useful for functions that take a while. Mining a block can take anywhere from a fraction of a second to essentially hours. And we usually don't want our bots to be unresponsive during that time. In some cases, we want to do something after the function is finished. Asynchronous functions return a promise. This promises how we interact with the asynchronous function we've executed. We can use its dot then method to specify a function to return after our bot has finished mining the block. Or even use its dot catch method with a function for if it fails. There's also another way to do this which doesn't involve splitting our code into multiple functions like this. You can use the await keyword to wait for the promise to be resolved. To use await, we need to make our function asynchronous using the async keyword when declaring our function. We can also shorten this down a bit. But now let's say you want the bot to mine the nearest block of gold. The find block function will come in handy here. As its name implies, it returns the nearest block that satisfies some certain criteria, or null if it can't find one. It takes one argument, which is an object that contains information about how it should search. Matching is the ID of the type of block we're searching for, and max distance is the furthest we should search before giving up. There are also a few other parameters you can specify, but these two should be enough for most things. I'm setting max distance to 5 so the bot won't detect any blocks out of its reach, since pathfinding is a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. After the search, we can simply check if the bot was able to find any gold. If there is, great. We can make our bot mine it. If not, we'll have the bot let us know by sending a message in the chat. Now, this works, but having this ID here makes it a little difficult to read. Instead of having this somewhat nebulous ID, we can pass a function that checks whether or not a particular block is gold. It makes our code a little more readable and makes changing the target block a lot easier. 
you can just change the name here instead of going through the trouble of looking up the ID. The final command makes the bot tower upwards. This behavior is a little more complicated than the first two, so let's break it down into stages. The bot needs to start jumping, wait until it's high enough in the air, place a block under itself, and finally stop jumping. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way first. To make the bot start and stop jumping, we can use set control state. After the bot has started jumping, we need to wait a bit before it's high enough in the air to place a block. Our bot has a wait for ticks method, which waits for a given number of ticks. This method is asynchronous, so we'll use a wait here. And to do that, we'll need to make our function asynchronous. The number of ticks it takes to be high enough in the air can actually vary a bit because of lag on the server and stuff. So we'll need to revise this a little. Let's have a loop. We'll get the block underneath the bot by first getting the position half a block down, and then calling block at on that position. Then, if that block is air, we'll break out of the loop. And if it's not, we'll wait for one tick before restarting the loop. Bots have a place block method for placing blocks. It takes a source block and a face vector. Which might sound a bit weird and complicated, but it's not really. In Minecraft, when you want to place a block, you do it by building off of other blocks. You look at one of the faces of a block that already exists and place a block like that. Which is why you can't place a block in midair. The source block is the block we're placing off of, and the face vector is what face we're placing the new block on. In this case, we want the source block to be the block two spaces down from where our bot's feet are. And we want to place the block on top of it. So our face vector should look like this. One final thing to note about the place block method is that it's asynchronous, so we'll await it before we tell the bot to stop jumping. Make sure the bot has some kind of block in its hand when it tries to pillar, or it won't work. You can use the give command for it. We'll go over how to do inventory stuff in another tutorial. And with that, I'll see you guys in a few weeks with my next video. Consider giving this video a like, and subscribe if you haven't already.